Hi, I'm Helene and welcome to my channel. So today in this video, I'm going to be talking about this sewing machine. If you're new here, I'm Helena, like I just mentioned. I make sewing videos, tutorial videos, pattern review videos, sewing machine videos, and much more. So if you'd like to watch that and you'd like me to continue making videos, comment below and subscribe if you're not already. So today in this video, I'm gonna be talking about this sewing machine, this new old sewing machine. So this sewing machine here is a vintage sing machine and I will put some clips so you can have a better look but what I'm going to be talking about is why I got one first of all and two how I actually refinished this case because if you look here and again I'll show you some clips and I'll show you some before as well it's not originally what it looked like it looks a lot better now First, I'm going to talk about why I bought a sewing machine like this. So, I have watched a few other YouTubers' videos about their Singer machines. The reason why people tend to buy them, the reason why people tend to buy them is because supposedly they are better at sewing or they're very good at sewing thicker fabrics. And I struggle on my domestic machine to sew things like denim. It's it's not the best of machines um, for sewing thicker fabrics. So I was looking into it. I hope you can't hear my dog snoring in the background. He's a real snorer. Anyway, so I, yes, I saw a lot of videos about why you should get one. And yep, yeah, so supposedly it sews thicker fabric better. I did try it briefly and it, it worked pretty well. Um, but before I really had a good go at this sewing machine, I had to do something about the case because it was in a shape. So this particular model, at least what I've looked up and uh, looking at the serial number, serial, serial number, serial number, supposedly according to Google and comparing on a few different charts, this was made in 1903. So therefore, this is 117 years old. Is that correct? And it still works. That's insane. My age times like four and, and more, like 4.5 or something. It's lived my life four times. So um, I got this on eBay. I saw some on Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace. So if you are interested in getting a vintage machine, then look at those places or whatever or you you know i don't know what country you're in so this particular model is supposedly the singer 99k they come in a few different types of cases i saw online some had a more round pre-finished wood case this which i will put a picture of what it looked like before came in a case it was wood, but then it was covered with some sort of fabric. Um, and the fabric was really old and dirty. Well, naturally, 117 years old. I don't know if it had been refinished or anything, but it was, you can see from the pictures and the close-ups, I'll show you. So what I wanted to do, because one, the fabric's gonna be going over this, this bottom half, and I will remove the, so it's gonna focus on that. So yeah, the fabric's gonna be sewing over this part. Again, I'll overlay, overlay some clips. Having a dirty, that area, not really good for sewing. So what I did, first I cleaned up the machine. I think it, it could do with a little bit more polish, um, but I cleaned up the actual machine first and then I took that out of the wood case. It has a few screws that I can take out and I decided to refinish it. So I've refinished a few different things in my lifetime. I have, we used, I have this round dining table of my dad's that was covered in paint. I don't, I might, I don't know if I have a before 
Um, maybe on my old Instagram. If I have a picture of those things, I'll just quickly so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I sanded those that back and refinished with just a varnish. So, and then, and then I also did with a little coffee table. What color your wood is going to turn out kind of depends on what kind of wood it is. So I wasn't sure what color I was going to get with varnishing this. If you look in the screen, it looks a little bit darker from what I'm looking at here to, to real life. But that's okay. It's still the same tone, maybe close up so I can get you a better color, but don't think you really care about that. So yeah, refinished those two things before. So I was like confident to do this. So basically I had a, well, I got an electric sander cause I actually lost mine, got one for like $30 super cheap way way better than hand sand sanders i figured i would probably use it again and hopefully don't lose it <laughs> this time it's way easier with a ha uh, electric sander so if you can get a really cheap one like that i would invest in it if you want to do something like this so yeah i gave it a really good sand down i but before i did that i had to strip the fabric off and that was so painful but luckily I had my boyfriend there and he's he's got a little better grip strength than me from his jiu so he helped me pull it off which was interesting oh, I don't know if I have any clips but when I was pulling it off I assume because it's so old or because of the type of fabric papery thing it is like the the print sort of disintegrated almost into like an ash type strange um a bit gross but it's it's old like so anyway um yeah once we sanded it down gave a really good sand smoothed it out so i first used a i think we used a 60 grid then an 80 grid and then we went up to 120 and then for like a final touch in between layers we were, i was using like a two, 240 grid to get it really smooth um, so yeah, once I had sanded it down and we'd pulled all the fabric off, the fab pulling the fabric off was probably the hardest bit. It, it's required a lot of strength and I had to cut around sort of, um, the hooky bit. And yeah, so after that I used a polyurethane or, or you can call it a varnish. And I just used a clear high gloss because I wanted it to be really, really glossy because I don't, because I've used a high gloss on the kitchen, the dining table. Uh, it's very, very durable because it creates this really thick sort of varnish layer. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, but that's what it is. And so you can almost sort of wipe stuff away if you did happen to, I don't know, drop something. Not that you should be having anything wet near your sewing machine, but we're all imperfect so and yeah so I did three coats and the first coat it really soaked up that oil-based varnish a lot and it looked it was looking dodgy for a second there so but the second coat started to look better but it left it a little bit a little bit rough so after that dried which takes about a day like uh, I would leave at least a day between coats because oil based varnish takes a long time to dry this isn't this is dry but it, it for the smell to completely go it could take a week or two which is annoying but whatever so it's been about a couple days since I did the last coat so yeah now it's looking this really high gloss paint and like I said before the third coat I did a really uh, I did a, a light sanding with about a 240 grit to get it really nice and smooth wiped that down and then went over with another I was considering doing a fourth because there is a few bits that could you know get a little light sand and then do it again but, you know, I got shit to do. I can't be bothered. Um, so that's for the case. I also, if you look here, see how glossy that is. I didn't do inside, which I probably should have, but I just like couldn't be bothered. Um, but 
they didn't have fabric on the inside so I also cleaned up the handle a bit but before I painted it I, you can actually unscrew these so I did that so that's for the refinishing of the case let me know what you think I think it turned out quite well considering where we came from and it is 117 years old supposedly according to Google but you know who knows what Google Google the only thing with this machine that I got um, not sure if I mentioned I paid about $70 for it like Australian dollars so that's probably a hundred US is it it's probably something like that so not too bad like reasonable price um, I've saw a few different like some people were selling them for 200 I was thinking of getting a singer it's I think it's 201k which is supposedly the best one or whatever but I saw this online and it was a pretty good price the 99k and I was like I don't really maybe I could think about getting that no I need to stop buying things <sighs> yeah so supposedly that's like the more heavy I'm not I don't obviously I'm not an expert in any of these things so I did do a little bit of research before I bought these and which one's good and whatnot and I've, I've actually joined a Facebook group called Vintage, something about vintage sewing machines, um, I think there's an Australian one too but um, I'll link that below, you might want to join, they just post pictures or maybe you're already a member but they just post pictures and details about vintage sewing machines so if that's something you're interested in totally join that and I, I did post in the group before I refinished the case asking if anyone has refinished their their case like this before and some people told me that the because uh, I wasn't sure what kind of sort of wood was going to be under that fabric because I thought because they used a fabric they probably would go with like a, maybe a cheap and nasty wood um, supposedly they said this is something called beach b-e-e -E. See, be be betch? I don't know, but some type of wood. Um, I looked it up and I looked up and I'm like, oh, it's a tree, but you know, <laughs> I could, it's a tree. But um, anyway, so that they've got lots of information there. But yeah, they told me, they didn't tell me much, but they were just kind of like, yeah, do it, mate. And so I'll be posting that. I did it. Um, now for the actual sewing machine, um, I'll give you some close ups. So there is a little bit of damage here. If you look, I'll put the, I have a photo from the listing. They had like a little bit of fabric and pins stuck to it. So probably the person who used it, that's how they like to do it. They put that on there and then they'd put a, a pin in. So it's kind of taken some of the varnish. I don't know what you call that. Dec like also the little singer decal, but like, I don't really care that much because that's not really the purpose of this isn't for it to look immaculate uh, whatnot. Everywhere else it doesn't have a lot of rust. There was a few things. Um, um, there's a tiny bit of rust on the plate and the needle um, but I got like a little I tried to put a tiny bit of vinegar so I got like a little cotton bud and like put vinegar there and left it for a bit to see if maybe you could eat some of that rust and then I cleaned it off and it did get rid of some of it and I also did that for a few little screws and knobs that were like keeping it in place that were a little bit rusty and I also sort of like not really sanded them but I used a sponge with one that one of those ones that has that rough side I can't remember what you call it a scour that sort of thing and uh, to get a little bit off so it's okay, like it's obviously not perfect, it's 117 years old, you know, I wouldn't be perfect at that age, not that I'm perfect now, but um, yeah, so it's made in Great Britain apparently, and the only thing I need to do more research in, and if you're watching this and you know more than me, uh, I'd love your help, but um, you know this bit here, what are they for? Like, I need to do more research into this, but, you know, I'm being lazy and asking you guys if you know. So if you know, let me know. Like, it's got 30, 20, 15, 12. Like, can they have a different um, stitch length? I thought they could only have one type of stitch length on this. Like, I'll have to watch some more videos on it, um, but asking you guys. 
Um, so yeah, again, mine has a foot pedal. You supposedly you can get them with like a knee bar or something or a knee pedal, which I saw, but I didn't think, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it would have been fine, but like I just, I'm used to pedals. So, oh yeah, it's, it also has like a little compartment bit here. Again, I'll close up, which you can put little things in for your sewing, your sewing needs. Um, which I found handy. It had a few needles and a few and a few different other feet in there. So that was good. So yeah, that's um, all I have to show you for this one. I'm trying to think about what video I should do next. I'm wondering, should I do a tutorial video or a thrift flip? Because I have a bunch of gingham pieces that I want to thrift flip. And I was thinking of either doing one video about those three pieces or doing a gingham series because um, I want to thrift flip them into something else. I'd love to hear from everyone in the comments. Let me know if you have a Singer vintage machine, how it goes for you, if you have any tips for me in my journey on this. So now I have three... Oh. Now I have four sewing machines, so granted one of them's an overlocker, so that's fine. That's completely necessary, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah, so I have the overlocker, I have this vintage one, I have the Singer Starlet, which I have a video for if you haven't seen that one, uh, versus a Singer, can't remember the number, but it's like a really basic machine that I got for $60. It's usually priced about $100. Um, my sister's currently using that one. I really want to get a, there's this machine that I, so I really want to do buttonholes because my Singer Starlet machine can do them, but it's very, very bad at them. And it needs to be very thin, like cotton lawn kind of fabric. And even then sometimes it's a bit dodgy. So if you have any recommendation for domestic machines that can do that, because I found that most domestic machines are terrible at buttonholes, but I have been recommended on the sewing vlogger Facebook group and maybe someone, some of you guys from there are watching, I'm not sure, but uh, a lot of people said they, the brother Inos, I'll put the number up here in case you're looking for the same thing as me. It's a brother sewing machine and they said it's really, uh, the buttonholes on the machine for them work really great. I've been thinking about getting a new, getting rid of the Singer Starlet and getting a new domestic machine because I've been avoiding buttonholes quite a lot and using snaps, but I'd really like to be able to, to do that. And I know I could sew them by hand, but just, it doesn't work as well as you want. But that machine is about 900 or $1,000 from the cheapest website I could find it on, like new. So that's still like an investment. Um, and it was my birthday recently and I did get a gifted a bunch of money, but I gotta save, you know, coronavirus. But also I really want to get a cover stitch machine. Um, I love my overlocker. I love sewing with knits because getting the fit right is a lot easier to be honest. I really wanna do that. And that's about seven to eight to a thousand dollars um seven hundred to a thousand dollars so that's an investment too so i couldn't do both i don't think i'm going to do either because i have to, to save money but eventually i will but yeah so if you guys have any recommendations for sewing machines that do buttonholes well let me know oh and if you have a cover if you have a cover stitch machine um, let me know what model you have and how it's been working for you because I, that would be very interesting. So thanks for watching my video. That's all I have for this week. Um, let me know if there's anything that you would like to see or hear from me. Give this video a thumbs up if you would like me to continue making videos and if you liked this video and also if you can subscribe below if you'd like. Somewhere down there, right? Isn't it? Um, also, you can if you hit the bell, um, I'm sure plenty of YouTubers tell you this, but if you hit the bell, then you're going to not be notified of every video I make because YouTube is not going to send my videos to many people and you'll probably miss a whole bunch of them if you aren't 
pressing the bell. Not the personalized bell, the all notifications bell. So if you, if you want that, and if you would like to see my face again, do that. Now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.